Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll explore what the project Y is and how to define it. Since it's such a critical starting point for a project, you should review some important prerequisites for this lesson, which include the CTQ drill down, the transfer function, and building problem statements. So for now, let's begin by reviewing again what the transfer function is. If you recall, the transfer function is defined as y equals f of x, or y is a function of x1, x2, or x3. Or we might say that the output response of y is a function of one or more input x's. Again, it describes the relationship between the various independent input factors, which are those x's, and how those all influence a dependent output response, which is the y. If you recall, what we talked about is how those are parts of the IPO flow model. And we described the IPO flow model in an example of a meat grinder, where we said with the meat grinder we have an input and we apply some process to it to create some sort of output. And how that whole process defines, again, how we're applying this, this transfer function. It's represented in this equation of the transfer function. So we showed how the inputs actually are the x's part of the transfer function. The process represents the f or the function applied to it. And the output y is the overall output as part of the transfer function. OK, now let's talk about how you can go about defining what the project y is. Well, in the measure phase, that's when we need to define the project Y and also identify all the potential factors, the X's that are part of the transfer function. Remember, our overall goal is that we're trying to find and fix the root cause. And to do that, we need to build a transfer function to understand how and what controls the output that we want to control and improve. So in order to build that transfer function, we need to know the project Y. And we also need to figure out all the possible X's that could be a part of that transfer function, all those things that influence the output or influence that Y. So how is it that we can find a project Y? We've got to refer back to the problem statement in the define phase. Basically, if you see something that's in the define phase that's a metric, something that describes the pain point, the symptom that's being felt that's part of the problem statement, whatever that measurement is, that's probably going to be the project Y, or it's at least the best place to start to figure it out. And another area is you can look into the CTQ drill down. You might find that the project Y may be something at the level three of the CTQs and how that rolls up to a level two and level one in the CTQs. Those could be great places to start in trying to figure out what your project Y should be. Now, what if the ideal project Y is not something that you're currently measuring? What if it's not already an existing metric or, or not something that you had already identified in your defined phase as part of your problem statement, but it's something completely different as the ideal way to measure it? Well, if it's not something currently measured, you got to make it measurable. You have to make it in some way, use some sort of measurement system that you might have to create in order to define what that, that standard is now for the project Y. You might have heard the old adage that you can't improve what you can't measure. So it has to be measurable in order to know whether you're actually making a, an improvement or some sort of positive difference in your results. So if it's not currently a metric, then you need to create a metric for it as soon as possible. It might require some additional time and a whole lot of extra work in order to create it, but the metric will serve as a baseline so how you can measure your progress to make sure that you're making an improvement in the right direction. So if you're going to have to do that, what are the characteristics of a good project Y? Either one that you currently have or one that you have to recreate. Well, it should be something that's a continuous value, ideally, in order to allow for some of the more powerful and flexible statistical tools for analysis. So try to aim for some sort of metric that is, that is continuous, because then you can also measure variation as part of that. It should also be clearly defined how you calculate that project Y and what are the data sources that you're using for your project Y. For example, if you're getting it from multiple reports or systems where a particular metric is reported, make sure you're consistent and you identify where you're getting that source for your measurement because you might find different reports or different systems have the metric reflected in different ways. So make sure you're at least consistent in identifying where you're getting your project measurement from and you continue to use that one source. Also, you want to account for the scale of scrutiny. That is, how detailed do you want it? Is it something that's going to be measured if it's like a, something over time? Are you going to measure it down to the, the daily level, weekly or monthly, or something even smaller, down to the hour or the seconds? Or, or is it something else that's measured um, over dollars? Or if it, is it something that's going to be measured over, over some space, like uh, over inches or, or centimeters or meters or something? Depending on what it is, you need to figure out what that is. And again, make sure you're consistent in how you're measuring that. 
it should also be something that's normalized because if it's not normalized then you may risk getting a false positive or false negative in your progress for your project so as an example if it's something that you're trying to use cost as a measurement that you're tracking well should you make that cost proportionate to revenue or the cost proportionate to the number of customers you should have something that you should make it as a representation of or normalized to some other value to ensure you're not again coming to some sort of false positive so as an example if you're just measuring pure cost for one particular department as your measurement for the Y well you might see that your cost is actually declining and you might look like a great thing but actually could it be a false positive could it be declining simply because your overall revenue is declining and as your revenue declines or maybe your customer base declines you might find you have less expenses so your cost is going down so it look, might look like you're actually making an improvement when maybe you're not because maybe there's some other driving factor behind that cost that's making it look like it's going lower when it's really not or, or you might see the opposite your cost is going up it might look like you're getting worse but again if you're not normalizing it to something like the overall revenue or the customer base or some other factor then you might look like you're getting worse when maybe you're not all, after all maybe it's you're getting additional revenue which might incur additional costs or you're increasing your customer base again which might ad incur additional cost so make sure whatever way you whatever metric you use that you're using something that is normalized to some degree so that way you can make sure you eliminate the possibility of any false positives or false negatives in your data all right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. Well, I'd like you to identify at least two different projects you worked on in the past within your organization. And then ask yourself, what was the project why, that critical output for each of those projects that you had worked? And remember, it should be something that's the critical metric that we use to measure success for that project. And did the project why reflect the actual pain that was being felt in the business that instigated the project in the first place? If it doesn't, then what is a better metric that would better reflect that pain that was being felt? And why wasn't that other metric used? Next, ask yourself, how does that project Y fit into the overall CTQ drill down? If that project Y doesn't fall under the path for the financial performance CTQ, then how is that financial impact measured for that particular project or initiative? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.